Hello everyone, it's Aaron from Rudy Visuals. Hope you're all doing well and keeping safe. In today's video, we're reviewing the Axoon Cine i2, a wireless video transmitter designed to easily transmit your camera's video feed to up to four devices. Now, before we get into this review, a big thank you to Crystal from Andy Cine for sending this over for us to review. This isn't a paid or sponsored review, but Andy Cine were kind enough to send us one of these for free. But as always, all thoughts and opinions are fully independent. So we have reviewed a few different wireless video transmitters on this channel in the past, but this one is probably the simplest one we've ever used. There's actually no separate receiver. It's just literally this one transmitter that you attach to your camera, get it all connected up, and you're able to transmit your video feed wirelessly to up to four different devices be they iPhones, iPad, Android phones, and tablets. So this makes it a really useful tool for vloggers, filmmakers, interviews, you know, video events, conferences, content creation, live streaming, YouTubers, you name it. Where you're filming with like multiple people who need to be able to see what is being filmed. Let's say you're shooting a big scale YouTube video and you need access to the video feed for like your director, your producer, your makeup artist, DOP, etc., etc. There are lots of use cases where having a wireless feed can make everyone's life a lot easier on set. Of course, these things can get very expensive, but the Cine i2 is designed to be a cheaper and more beginner friendly device with its kind of simple no frills design and entry level price of just $250. It's about £219 here in the UK. So let's take a look at what you get inside the box. So let's get this box opened up. So not the most exciting of unboxing experiences. You literally just have a manual and it's literally just one unit itself, which is this right here. Now do bear in mind that it doesn't come with any kind of battery or cables. So you do have to provide your own. There is also this horseshoe mount, which you can use to attach to your camera. And Andy Sinner did also give me this quick release plate, which also makes it a lot easier to just quickly take it on and off. So in terms of the build quality, this thing does feel, it does feel excellent. It's a metal construction. It feels very robust, very solid, and also looks pretty cool too. Kind of looks like a droid from Star Wars or something. And there is also this 1.3 inch OLED screen that is, you know, it's functional. It doesn't need to be any better than it actually is. The only downsides build quality wise are the front buttons here. They do feel a bit mushy. There's like no feedback whatsoever. Um, but apart from that, everything else is pretty great. Uh, IO wise, you have your HDMI in and HDMI out. So you can loop your signal to a monitor or a TV, etc. And on the other side, you have just USB-C, DC in and your power button. And the USB-C is for controlling the camera, I believe, not for charging as on the back here, you need to provide your own Sony and P batteries. And on the top here, you have these really cool looking antennas that fold in like this. And one thing that I really like about this Cine i2 is that it just works straight out of the box. You don't really need to do much to get this up and running. It's just pretty much download the app, connect it via Wi-Fi, and it pretty much pairs automatically, choosing the best channel available. And the UI and menus, they're literally like six pages where you can see your, you know, your connection status, your battery, your channel, transmission settings, channel settings reset the network and wireless info, et cetera, et cetera. The app itself is probably what surprised me the most. So primarily with this device, you'll be monitoring via the app. And it has some really high end features like histograms, waveforms, focus peaking, RGB, zebras, false colors. You can customize everything to your liking and you can even record on the phone and save footage on your phone too. So very, very useful to have there. And performance wise, this has a maximum range of 150 meters, which is about 400 feet. And in my testing, I found this to be pretty much accurate. To be honest, I don't know why anyone needs to film that far away, but it's definitely good to know that it works. Though do keep in mind that this is with a big open space, like a field, and the range will reduce depending on if you're in a well-built area area where there might be more physical obstructions and electronic interference. So we have the camera connected up and you can hear the audio being played back, I think. And I'm just gonna walk forward to see how far we can get. Okay, so as you can see, I'm about, I don't know, 50 meters away and connection is still working absolutely fine. And at this point, I'm about 100 meters away. And as you can see, still working fine. The latency is 0.06 seconds, so it's 
fairly noticeable and even if you're filming and focus pulling in real time the lag is pretty negligible in my opinion and I think the most impressive thing you know as I mentioned earlier is that you can transmit this to up to four different devices whether those are our iPhones, iPads, Android devices you can pretty much mix and match however you need. The Sennheiser i2 uses a 5 gigahertz signal and supports video input of up to 1080p and 60 frames a second and also supports 48 kilohertz and 24-bit audio input so that means that you can still record in 4k 120fps and higher but the video footage that you will see will be capped at 1080p 60 frames per second. It also features a no fan design so it's pretty much silent and a single F970 battery can last you up to 20 hours. The trade-off of the fanless design is that it does get a little bit warm after long use but I haven't had any issues with like overheating or anything like that but just do keep in mind that it does get a little bit hot. The only issue to be aware of is that you are limited by your camera in that certain models aren't able to display a signal on your screen and also output a wireless transmission. So for example on an A7 III we can see our screen it works here and the signal being trans transmitted is fine but as soon as you hit record the screen goes blank because the camera doesn't have enough power to do both. Some camera models can do it, some others can't. Some can't even display anything even when there's nothing being recorded as soon as you plug this in. The way to get around this though is to use the HDMI out and have the camera operator use a field monitor like this. So just something to be aware of, you will need to use a field monitor as well for your camera operator if you're using like a lower end camera. So in summary, would I recommend this? If you are in the market for a wireless video transmitter, the Sennheiser i2 does the job really well. It's well built, performs great, is very simple to use and comes at a very wallet friendly price too. So if you just need something simple like this, then it's definitely getting a good recommendation from me, especially considering the price. If you do need something higher end, you will have to spend a lot more money so for me it's a very good entry-level video transmitter anyway that's gonna do it for this video thank you so much for watching any questions leave them down there in the comment section below and if you're interested in picking one of these up for yourself there will be links in the description box below if you found this video helpful then give it a like and subscribe to see more hit those bell notifications as well and uh, follow us on socials too thank you once again to Andy Sinner for making this video possible see you on the next one peace